Hey, what's up guys? Footy Manager TV here, and today I've got another episode of my Southampton career into the second season. Here we've got a match against Aston Villa. Uh, we've got a very solid team now, apart from Gaston Ramirez leaving. I've got a lot of young players coming through. A lot of players at the team last year have improved. And yeah, I'm really enjoying playing with this current team right now. Uh, so really, out of all my FIFA videos, uh, this is probably what you're going to see most frequently. A bit of ultimate team. Um, it just really depends how I'm feeling in that. I know, uh, look at this guy here, Jordan Bowery. I actually signed him from Aston Villa. He's got 97 sprint speed and then the 88 strength. Obviously... Uh, he's not as good technically, but hopefully he can improve that as he's still a fairly young player, like 21, I believe he is. So, um, yeah, that's all right. But now, uh, we had, the first chance was pretty much here uh, in the 31st minute, well, starting from here at least. And Mallorca, he's developing to a fantastic player as well, was great last year. But then Lalana, he's been fantastic as well from midfield, scoring another goal there. As I've said, he's been a very good goal scorer from midfield, and he's increasing very well as well. So um, you've got to be happy with him, of course, being at the team already. And like we've got Paradis as well. He's a similar type. And also, I think I said it once or twice before, maybe a month or so from now, I'm going to be changing my formation to a Barcelona formation and Barcelona tactic as well. Uh, or custom, yeah, custom tactic and the formation. So um, hopefully that will be good as they have a chance here. That was very lucky. Uh, they didn't score, but yeah, um, I tried to build a Barcelona philosophy uh, to keep people interested and uh, people want to see how I play, uh, trying to play like Barcelona with a team of Southampton, uh, like building them into a next team like that and hopefully score some good goals and yeah, hopefully I can show that as well. Uh, Lalana cutting in uh, with the fake shots, that seems to be the best thing for me to get past the players because I don't know, I'm not really good with skills, but then Paradis, like I said, uh, he's from Argentina. I, I really want to build him into the next Messi uh, for my team. I'll play him in that center forward position, uh, like with the false 9 4 3 3. And you'll see one of my signings uh, to replace Gaston Ramirez should fit in that formation as well. So it will be all looking good until then. Uh, we've got Bowery in there. He can make an impact with his pace on the wing. So I reckon it can be decent, even though we're showing this formation is solid. We're winning 2 0 right now against Aston Villa. A probably even team, you would say, but. Uh, we've probably got better physical players, which is better for um, career mode, obviously, or just FIFA in general. As you see, Darren Bent scores a goal. Uh, he's always a very consistent goal scorer, no matter what game I play, whether it be um, in FIFA or Football Manager as well. Football Manager, he's a very good, uh, consistent goal scorer. But here, you can see we've got now we've got like decent options to come off on the bench. We've got Renato Nato uh, to come in for a defensive mid. He's good defensively, uh, fairly good going forward as well. And one thing about James Ward-Prowse, he has fairly good potential like to go into the mid-80s, but the thing is, like he's a really weak player, he doesn't have great shots, he's only basically good at passing, uh, but that that's why I'm, another reason I'm introducing this 4-3-3, uh, similar style to Barcelona, to get the best out of him pretty much. Of course, uh, like this formation, I'm probably relying on him in a centre-mid position to get forward and score some goals, but that is not the case. And in a 4-3-3, uh, he can sit back and then just play the balls uh, to the more advanced players and go from there. But here, bring on Jack Cork, you know, probably a more defensive option. And then Gerate, Jack Cork, he's very solid as well, improving in some attributes that he needs as a defensive center mid or a center defensive mid, just depends on the role you play in there. We should have got a free kick, but Barry wanted to go on with it. Uh, you can see his pace really here. When he does the fake shots, he gets that extra meterage, and then he finishes. Look at that. Uh, he really doesn't show... Uh, his poor technical attributes then. If he can keep putting in good performances, hopefully he does increase in his attributes. And if he does increase uh, with his technical attributes, he could be a really good player. And yeah, as you can see, with that extra pace, uh, with the fake shots, he does create that extra uh, bit of space to get past his opponents, which is very good. But some shots with him is really bad because, you know, yeah, his technical attributes aren't great, but um, he is going to get them eventually good like that. And you'll see he'll score on some occasions. Nathaniel Klein, he finds Mayuka, and that's a penalty. And Mayuka, this season, I'm really looking for him to step up into, like, a world-class player to uh, reach us into the top four. Because don't forget, if we win this match here, I pick up another three points. We're like being in the top four right now because winning the first two matches... And yeah, I, can't, I couldn't wish for a better start. So Mallorca, finish it, and he does. We're not going to lose this one unless disaster strikes. But Mallorca, he's been re ever reliable since I joined the club. Clearly has been our best player, at least best striker for sure. Some close challenges, but no doubt. Look at Mallorca again, getting past the players fairly easily. But again, uh, Barry, uh, I suppose 
I thought, yeah, he kind of had a bad touch there. So uh, you're going to get that with him, though, but then you're going to get the pace on the counter-attack. So you got to uh, take the good with the bad, and he'll hopefully score goals for me. And don't forget the goal scored against his old team, Aston Villa. But here, Stephen Ireland. I thought I kind of defended this well. I tried to mark their player, and they got that lucky ball there. And here, you don't think they're going to create opportunity. I try and, like, counter them, or contain them, I should say. But then Enzogbia, again, trying to slide to get it. And they just held onto the ball for too long. And then, of course, they intercepts. Then Fabian Delph uh, should come in and or really should have finished that. But, yeah, he's not great shooting. He's fairly good pace and fairly good passing, but not much else to his game, in my opinion. Uh, Ex-Leeds player. Uh, had a very high potential. Uh, probably hasn't lived up to it, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Steve and I had a chance. And, of course, the rebound from my keeper. How much times are you going to see that? So, going into the deadline day, I'm going to look to... Sign someone who can replace Gaston Ramirez, but also another keeper uh, to obviously uh, replace Artur Boric. You know, Artur Boric, he's been too up and down for me. Uh, some games he's been good, but some games he makes those mistakes. So hopefully we can find someone. I want to. I don't want to buy a goalkeeper that's too young, like under 20. I want to buy it maybe in the 21 to 25 range. Who's someone, like, they're good already, but they can still grow uh, for the couple seasons I play until... FIFA 14 comes out, obviously. So, someone in between 21 and maybe 24, 25 would be perfect uh, because that's still a fairly young age for a goalkeeper. And here, they obviously scored another one. I just want to waste a bit of time and clear it, but it did not end there. If they scored here, this would be probably my worst loss, or worst uh, result, really, because we were winning by three goals. And if they score here, like I said, it would be a disaster. But we clear it. Jack Cork, again, a very reliable passer of the ball. Uh, he's nowhere near our best player. Uh, he's yeah, he doesn't have amazing attributes, uh, but he's got attributes that he needs for his position as a defensive centre mid. So um, yeah, he's solid play for us, and yeah, hopefully he can continue solid performances. And here, obviously, Bowery a very good performance for us, and he got well, he didn't get man of the match. Obviously, uh, someone from Aston Villa would have, but uh, very solid to pick up another result. Uh, some teams there, Bolton back in the Premier League. Uh, Wolves as well, they lost. And yeah, some mixed results there. I wanted to inquire about Asamoah from Juventus. He's a solid player, but Dean Hammond as well. Got to let go of him. Like, all these under-70 players, then they can't be good enough. That's a reason why we finished 14th last se season, yeah. Because uh, over the course of the season, we had to play those lower-rated players. And yeah, obviously we couldn't. So here, we've got 45 million and so much wage budget. So we could go for a big player, but like I said... I wanted to go for a keeper as well, so I didn't want to spend it all on one player. I want to find someone like here, Willie Ain. He's got very good uh, sprint speed, and look there, he he will be fantastic in a four three three. Look at that dribbling ninety three, and he's still he's twenty five, so he's good already. That's what I wanted to sign with that money. I didn't want to sign a young prospect. I want someone who can come in, uh, and he's three overalls better than Gaston Ramirez, and we're going to sign him. Or if we do sign him, it will be about uh, if you see there about ten million cheaper. We sold Gaston Ramirez for 40 million, don't forget. Uh, 40 million is a big amount for a player. And as you can see here, we've got Swansea on the deadline day. You're going to see something interesting in a minute. Uh, you know we won our first couple, we won our first two games to give us six points to put us in the first match, or the first, to put us in the top four, I should say. Uh, I just woke up. <laughs> anyway, um, a transfer offer for Nathaniel Klein. I just, I didn't want to negotiate or anything. I just reject. Um, as you said, he might want to leave, but as he said, he'll leave on the end of his contract, and that's the end of three seasons from now. So I'm not going to worry about that because, yeah, that's like so far away from now. I'm probably not going to uh, finish five seasons. So uh, realistically, uh, two seasons by the end of FIFA 14, like two more seasons, like the end of this season, end of next season. Uh, so I really want to do, really, really want to look to look to do good in the Champions League this season because, uh, uh, or the Europa League, I should say. And if I win it, that'll be fantastic. And then try and qualify for Champions League next season. And then somehow win that. And that will finish the series perfectly. But a lot of hard work will have to go in for that. And a lot of improving for my youngsters. And Willie Ayn, he'll he has to be one of those. Because he's replacing Gaston Ramirez. He has to make an impact. But he'll be good in the formation we want to play. He can play out wide on the left or as a striker. And so, yeah, he could be good. And either Obviously, we won't play the false nine every match. It just depends on the game. Um, who we're playing against and who's available on fitness and that. And I'm glad he accepted. Luckily, I'm so happy we didn't ta like draw out the negotiations and we got him straight away. 
And yeah, we can just add him to the team there. I'm probably going to replace Dongu Safak for now. I don't change the formation just yet. But soon enough, I will. And yeah, hopefully it can be good. And also, I'm playing that way so people can keep entertained with the career. Uh, doing a few new things. And yeah, hopefully you enjoy my signings. I'll start to introduce some young players as well. We've got some very good prospects. Uh, Giuseppe Vinci. I'm really excited about him. A 66 overall. Uh, we signed him on a free transfer. You know, those free agents. He can get some beasts in there. And he's, of course, only 18. So he can become a good player. But Willie Ayn, look, he's got insane dribbling, 93. And he's got the four-star skills and ball control of 90. So, um, yeah, he can be decent for us. But he, I was looking for a keeper. So uh, there was quite a few options. But Kevin Trapp, he really impressed me. And his value was... Uh, really enticing, and he's got 90 jumping as well, so he's always going to be reliable in the end. He's got a uh, 62 sprint speed. You know, I like to bring my goalkeeper out. 62 sprint speed is probably uh, one of the highest I've seen for a keeper, even though it, obviously it's not a lot, but that's decent for a keeper if you ask me. Uh, 62 sprint speed. So, um, yeah, there was a couple other options I was looking at, like Oliver Bauman, another German, uh, but again, uh, he was someone who was good at jumping as well, but for me, uh, Kevin Trapp. Uh, the, uh, there was just something I liked about him and David Espina. There's some decent options. Uh, Mattia Perrin as well, or Perrin, uh, a very good young goalkeeper. If you want to go, he's probably the best option for a young goalkeeper, if you ask me. But the thing is, uh, for me, I just want to buy someone as good already. And Trap is a bit better than Perrin is already. And he's just amazing in the air. I've actually used him once on Ultimate Team when just making a random team. And he's a very solid keeper. Um, actually, nothing went past him in Ultimate Team when you know goalkeepers are fairly bad in Ultimate Team. But yeah, that 90 jumping is really good. So he can control those crosses or corners and just those set pieces where I concede sometimes. Uh, he should be solid and we should be able to get him for under 10 million and that will be decent. And like I said, he's only 23, so uh, he can still improve. 23 is still really young for a keeper. That's when keepers really just start to come onto the scene pretty much. It just really depends. If you're, like, you're a lower team, obviously you might give a younger keeper a chance. But um, yeah, um, a 23 is a very good age because he can still improve, like I said. So here we still have to negotiate a bit because obviously uh, Frankfurt, he's their key goalkeeper. And he's under 80 overall though, So, um, but he'll get above that quickly, hopefully anyway. And yeah, we won't have to worry about that. But the hours are closing down and it will be a disaster if we don't get another keeper pretty much especially uh, with my higher expectations but the contract is accepted You've got to be happy with that and now hopefully all well, the offer was accepted now the contract has to be accepted uh, so hopefully he does and he joins us and i'll re be really confident with my team especially with the two new signings like a new attacker and a solid player in uh, in goals because Arthur Boric is getting older and he's going to start to decrease his attributes this season. I was really surprised he didn't last season. But this season, of course, being 31 now, that's almost a for sure bet, pretty much. Uh, Callum Chambers, again, I'm really getting rid of those players that I don't really need. And they're too low. Kevin Trapp, I was so happy. Normally, you're not really too excited about goalkeepers coming to your team because they don't really make an impact. But for me, at least in career mode, goalkeepers make a big impact. Great goalkeepers, they save you on a lot of occasions. And yeah, um, they controlled the defense very well. And yeah, he's a decent player, especially with that jumping. I was really impressed with 90 jumping. So um, he should really always cover those uh, set pieces and that kind of thing. And look at there, the difference between the spin speed. It's 62 and Boric was like in the red. So uh, he should make a difference and will be a key goalkeeper for me, how I like to control my keepers uh, with bringing them out. So that he should be a good goalkeeper for that. So he's good. He's a bit fast. Obviously, 62 sprint speed isn't fast, but that's pretty fast for a keeper. Uh, there isn't much higher than that if you... Well, obviously, there will be. And look at that right here. Southampton, we're second right now. If we won the next match, which you think we would against Swansea, as you can see, the, it, the match disappeared. And we still played two matches, but look what happens here. We lose 2-1 because the game was simulated. Because the game was on the same day as the transfer deadline day, we couldn't play it. Just another bug in FIFA career mode. And that really plagued me from being top of the league. If I won that, I would have been top of the league, which is really disappointing. And maybe it starts a bad of a run of bad results, and that would be really disappointing uh, from EA. I could, like, realistically, the way I was playing, uh, we could have at least draw that match. But the way we were playing, especially with new signings as well, I think we would have won with Willie Ayn, the new signing, and a strong goalkeeper. I don't think we would have conceded goals. And, yeah, I think we would have won that match against Swansea. I believe we have a better team. Uh, so if it wasn't for the... Really, the stupid thing, that that's just ridiculous. Uh, we could have easily been first, or just at least 
at least retaining our position in the top four. So I was really disappointed with that when that happened. Because, yeah, I was really interested for that match. Because if we, I wanted to keep winning, but then my winning streak just got cut out there by EA and just their ridiculousness of the game. And that's something that needs to be removed uh, from FIFA 14 or from FIFA 14. For FIFA 13, it needs to be removed. So there's not that problem with FIFA 14. And yeah, you probably, I'm just going to try and focus on my videos now, not focus on, on getting bored or focusing on Fortnite. 14. I'm just going to try and focus on my videos, even though I just woke up now, but that's the best time to make videos uh, now uh, for me. So sorry if the commentary isn't amazing, if I didn't commentate perfectly, but uh, yeah, like I said, I just woke up after staying up a lot last night on Saturday night, but um, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video. As you can see, my hooker, he's just a beast and going with Willian and Paradis, the attack is going to be amazing and Girate as well. I'm really excited to play with them, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you guys next time.